have three people running for that, so their Q and A is going to be nine minutes for all those three candidates. And then we have uh, three executive or four executive um, positions: secretary, treasurer, vice president, and president. Those speeches are going to be five minutes with three minutes Q and A. And because we have twenty candidates today, we have. Uh, every single position having been filled by somebody who wants to run for that position, we're going to be really strict with time today. So please, please <laughs> um, make sure that your questions are appropriate for the time being. And um, for Q&A, oh, and then halfway through the break, I'm um, halfway through, um, all of the candidates will take a break, and that's a lot of people to get through today. Um, and for Q&A, anybody's welcome to ask any questions. If you're an officer right now, if you're a candidate, you can ask other candidates questions. So. Please feel free to ask questions as you want, just be, you know, with appropriate with time. And for voting, um, so AJ and Kim are in the back there with the laptops, they're waving. So they'll be um, handling all the ballots, they'll be checking if you are a paid FOSA member, and you can vote. If there are more than one candidates, when you're done with your speech, just go into size so you don't have to keep going back and forth until your q and is over. And um, back to voting stuff. Um, so for more voting tests, um, there's a candidate obviously for each single position, but if you believe that a candidate is not, um, you know, if you believe that they are not appropriate to um, fulfill that position, you can abstain from voting as well. So keep that in mind so you don't always have to vote if you feel like they are not the right candidate to do, it, to do so. And remember, you must be a paid member to vote, and Kim and AJ will be checking that for you. And we'll go ahead and get started now. Yes? For questions, um, how do we determine who goes first for answering questions? For answering, what do you mean? The Q and A's. Oh, for like, oh, so there's like two of you. Yeah. Ups. Yeah. So both of you are gonna. So after both of you guys are done, they'll be standing off to the side, and it'll be a Q and A session. It's up to you too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Is Q and A directed to certain candidates, or is it for both candidates to answer? It depends on whatever. If if someone says, "Oh, Charlotte, this question is for you." But I mean, if they just like generally have a question, both of you guys can answer it. Maybe, or if you, you don't want to answer it, that's fine too. Cool. Okay. Any other questions before we start? All right. Cool. So we'll go ahead and start with our first candidate. Uh, our first candidate is Leanna Tree. She is a freshman here at UW. Uh, intended major is chemistry, and she's running for academics. Right now, 
However, because there are so many students of different ages and grades and with different academic needs, um, I want to revamp the program to be able to tailor the workshops to specific groups of students. For example, this would include offering college application, essay, and testing workshops to juniors and seniors. For the underclassmen, this would be um, helping them decide how they want to proceed in high school. I want to make sure that the students that are a part of Project Family are getting the specific help that they need to, and support in order to succeed. These are just a few of the things I want to accomplish if elected as FOSS's Academics Chair for the 2016-2017 school year. Thank you so much for your time, and I hope you guys all vote for me. Uh, do we have any questions for Leanna? Okay. Yes. Hi. Um, so, as the last, um, I guess, academic chair that we did at Project Family, uh, one, I'm excited to hear your goals and dreams for it. But two, I'd like to hear a little bit about your recruitment. Um, when Project Family was last revamped, it was targeted towards a certain group of um, students that really needed the help. And so, it'd be interesting to hear what your thoughts are in terms of that. So, right now, um, Mary Jo did a really good job of recruiting members uh, last year. And at this last bill day, we had so many students sign up and say that they were interested. So, I don't want to say that recruitment isn't going to be on my list of things to do. It's still going to be there. But I want to focus on um, making the program more uh, accessible to each grade first before um, moving on with recruiting more students. That way we'll have a basis for how we want to proceed in the future and then all we have to do is recruit students. Okay, that's great. Um, I think one, by being the um, person who kind of changed its, um, its form or its model in previous years in 2006, um, I think it would be great to see if you guys could target a little bit more towards underserved Filipinos. I remember that was a huge part of my, uh, my mission in the beginning, and so it would be interesting to see it if kind of partnering with the Filipino Community Center um, and also the public schools to see whether or not if we can um, bring that to focus in the future years. Thank you, though. Really exciting. Other questions? John. Thank you for your uh, information. I was really curious to hear um, what you were planning project coming and with the rest of the organization. So, um, uh, an important part of project family right now is also the mentorship of high school students. So, I'm curious to hear about what your plans are for training college students as mentors for high school students. Um, so, with this next year, since so many students have shown the interest, um, I don't think it would be possible to keep that one-on-one -on -one mentorship with everyone unless everyone in this room was interested in being a mentor. Um, so, instead of creating those one-on-one -on -one relationships, rather, um, we could create a group of uh, college students that we could train for, specifically for sophomores. Um, so that they would know how to advise them in deciding if they want to take AP or IB courses or if they want to do Run and Start, that kind of thing. And then a specific group of college students to help the juniors or seniors with their college applications and that sort of thing. Just to let you know, like, um, as a year of September, like, we have resources available to help you out with that also. So we're more than happy to help you. And that's yeah. all we have time for questions. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Leanna. Yes. activities candidates coming up. Um, first is going to be Katharina Ed. She is a freshman here at Utah instead of majors biology and she's running for the activities position. Hello, my name is Katharina Mateo Ed. I'm currently a freshman intending to major in biology and I'm running for the activities chair for the 2016-2017 school year. I have a twin sister, and we did everything together, but we decided to go our separate ways to college. During fall quarter, she convinced me to go to the Philippine Olympics since she was also going. But since I was new, I didn't really know anyone in FASA, and I expected just to hang out with her. However, I quickly learned that I was wrong. I immediately connected with my fellow, um, my fellow FASA members through teamwork and the desire to place. 
I was then encouraged to get more involved in FASA. So I attended um, many other activities and events, such as retreat. I joined Seattle, and I was a part of Seattle Showcase, and I'm currently a part of Bill Knight. And with all this involvement, I can confidently say that it's with these events that really helped me reconnect with my culture, with our culture, and help me create the strong friendships and bonds that I have worked And this is why I'm running for activities to share. After experiencing how much FASA has impacted me, I want to be able to do the same for others by creating events that unite all of us together and make us proud to say that we are a part of FASA. I believe that I have the qualities to be an officer because in high school, I, had, I held leadership positions in orchestra and tennis, both requiring me to organize events as well as integrate team bonding. To me, FASA is an ever-growing team. And as activities chair, I want to be that person who helps bring people together into one big team, a family. And finally, if elected next year, I have two goals. My first goal would be to continue FASA Fridays and make them more frequent. One problem I noticed this year was that there weren't any FASA Fridays that I was aware of. And I want to change that by hosting FASA Fridays on the off weeks from general meetings. I would ask members what they wanted to do so we can get their input. Ideas could be karaoke nights, movie nights, and maybe some hip-hop cardio nights. <laughs> I think FASA Fridays are crucial to uniting FASA because they're casual get-togethers that serve to bring members closer together by having a place to meet with new people, hang out with friends, and just to have fun. Another goal I have is to set up an Asian RSO mixer earlier in the year. It would be an event where we would all get together and share our culture through food and performances. The event would be called This Is How We Roll, because the food would include spring rolls, egg rolls, sushi rolls, lumpia, and much more. And with this event, we will be able to strengthen our bonds with the Asian American community at the UW and share our culture to others as well. Honestly, for someone who was as socially awkward as me, to be up here talking to all of you really shows how much FASA has transformed me. It allowed me to get out there, gain confidence, and simply be myself. With, F, which, yeah, sorry. with each and every FASA event, I truly felt that I had become a part of the FASA fam. And hopefully, as your activity share, I will have the opportunity to do the same next year. Thank you. Vince O'Canna. He is a freshman here at UW and in a major public health, and he's also running for the activities position. Hello. Good afternoon to you all. My name is Vince O'Connor. I attended majors public health, and I'm running as your 2016-2017 activities chair. For those who don't know me, growing up, I had a rich Filipino foundation. I was born in the Philippines, I spoke my mom's native language, along with Tagalog, and I loved adobo. However, that all changed when I immigrated to America. Being in predominantly prestigious white schools, I was hesitant, hesitant to speak my native tongue, rel reluctant to discuss my cultural roots, and ashamed to bring adobo to lunch. I shared the same common feelings coming into college. But as I went more to more FASA meetings and events, I gained a sense of belonging, a sense of community, and a sense of identity. The way Sarah articulates every historical corner, the veracity and sincerity, imposes a deep admiration for my country's origins that I once had. Or the way Mary Jo treats every member, every officer like her own, reminds me how extremely family-oriented Filipinos are. And one of the reasons why I'm running for activity chair is because FASA has become my source of cultural empowerment and diversity. Being part of FASA has slowly molded me back into the person I was. It wasn't until this quarter that I realized that I realized I wanted to become a leader, a leader for FASA. As far as experience of being a leader, I've been I have been involved with several events and activities affiliated with FASA, such as Filipino Day, Dog Sleds, and the Filipino Health Career Association. Also, prior experiences in high school as a retreat leader, youth group leader, and event coordinator for sporting events. These activities have helped me grow as a person and allowed me to earn, allowed me to form friendships that I still cherish today. And that's what I want activities to be like for anyone who participates in activities at FASA. Activities that allow for personal growth and team bonding, and of course, activities that are enjoyable. If elected activities chair, I will work hard to maintain the activities already established in FASA. For example, I will continue to make FASA formal, eventful, and memorable. I will invite more people to come and participate in FASA All-Stars. But at the same time, I would also like to create activities that allow for everyone to become involved in. 
Maybe aside from just sport-related events, we could do activities that allow for musicians to display their talent, such as through a talent show. This will allow for all sorts of unique talents, like singers, dancers, music, musicians, poets, comedians, etc., to come out and participate. Filipinos have an array of talent, and I think it would be great to see a little glimpse of it. I think it is also imperative that we center some of our activities based off of our cultural roots. That will be a lot more feasible with the possible collaboration of the culture, cultural chair on future ideas for activities. I want this next school year for FOSA to be as memorable as this year, if not more memorable. Memorable. I hope to make these activities exciting and engaging for FOSA members and for future generations. FOSA allows me to embrace my cultural roots, and I want to do the same for you. There's no place like home, and, I, and I'm slowly beginning to find here at FOSA. Thank you. Q&A for this position. Okay, let's start with the current. So, when it comes to being activities shared, making a whole bunch of events and activities and groups and things like that, there comes kind of a sense of management with time and priorities. Uh, when it comes to like Fossil Fridays and it comes to Fossil All Stars and it comes to formal, it's very important that you have that balance between getting enough done for that event and managing your time with school or other personal things. What do you, why do you guys feel confident that you have the skills to manage both something that big and your own lives? Um, I think first of all we would try to make try to create a consensus with the officers and see what's like more feasible if this if we could uh, Create, um, or if we could create more um, activity, or if we could uh, allow this activity to come to pull through, I think we have to have um, a consensus with the with the board of officers. And once we have consensus between them, I think we will be able to uh, implement that activity. Yeah. Uh, I, think it's really <laughs> I think it's really important to also coordinate with the officers to make sure that the project you have in mind is um, realistic. And of course, you should always start earlier than what the, the date should be, because just in case something happens, and just in case something comes up, you'll always be prepared for those kind of events. So, like what he said, of course you have to coordinate, but also start early. Okay, next question. Okay. Um, so I really like that you both integrated um, activities related to culture. That's one thing that I really like about activities is that you don't have to just focus on social, the social aspects of the um, plaza, right? Um, but what I didn't hear was how do you integrate our political um, pillar into act an activity? And um, what are you guys' ideas? I think a really good idea was um, Maybe we can go into more rallies that are available. I'm not really aware of political rallies, but with like the help of the political chair next year, we can coordinate to come up with more uh, events that we can go out to and convince, not convince, but to uh, bring everyone out to participate. Yeah, just uh, tagging on, tagging along what uh, Kat said. Uh, I think it would be great if we looked at the uh, what's going on in the Philippines and just try to apply that to our activities. Another question? Three. I like the idea of the um, Pasta Fridays as an outlet for um, us to chill outside of school and to hang out. Um, for in the case of um, activities with other FASA events, or um, so just for example, of um, SIAP practices tend to be on Fridays for the open practices. How do you plan to work around for other um, events and schedules within FASA? Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, since I am a part of SIAP, I understand that the rehearsals are from 5 to 7. So I was thinking that um, to ensure that other members can go too, I didn't want, I was thinking of not making it like right after seven because there are people who commute and starting so late in the day is really unfortunate, especially since they won't be able to participate. And I was thinking of starting like the Fossil Fridays from 
six to maybe eight. So it gives like a big time. So see so out yeah, after like your practice, they can participate and come afterwards. And people who aren't part of Sayal can still be able to come out early enough. And still, those who commute, that was my intention. So, uh, so kind of thinking back to what Adrian was asking earlier, but um, what are some what are some strategies that you have to manage your time as both a student and an officer in such an intensive and events-based position? And that can be either strategies you use now or that you foresee yourself using next year. <laughs> so. Um, I think like the best thing to do is prioritize because I understand there's socializing, there's academics, and then there's FOSS as well. So when there's socializing, it's kind of hard because you should always like self-care and take care of yourself and have fun. But at the same time, if you have so much time into that, or if you have like your procrastination time when you're taking a nap, I'm thinking <laughs> instead of taking that nap, why not do your homework as much as you can and uh, do your homework so you can have time for FOSS afterwards. And I like using planners. I <laughs> I use my planner, I, um, I write down stuff in order of what I should do in like how much they're important. And that's what I do, my <laughs> like, current organization. Um, yeah, I just think definitely like time management is like really important. To be able to um, prioritize what you have to prioritize, the, big, the bigger things, and then keep the smaller things um, ahead for like later on. And, um, like, and definitely like plan early. Um, Okay, that's all we have time for. Thank you. For all right, next up we have RJ Dumo. Um, RJ is a freshman here at the UW, uh, intended major is nursing, and he is running for the community service position. Well, um, hello, how's everyone doing today? Good. 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 <laughs> Well, again, hello, my name is RJ Dumo. I'm a freshman intending to major in nursing, and I'm running to be your community service officer for next school year. Coming into UW, I didn't expect myself to be standing here in front of you all today. Before this year, I never really found a place where I can completely let my voice be heard in the community. I always saw myself going with the flow, letting myself be dragged by my responsibilities inside and out of school, without really trying to explore what I wanted to do as an individual. However, after joining FASA and meeting so many individuals carve out their own path, I found the desire to find myself and explore my culture and interests. I want to be a FASA officer because I want to give back to the community that has given me so many opportunities. Whether they have been connections to amazing FASA alumni, a way to help me find my Filipino culture, or a way to just let my voice be heard, or something as simple as just to get it, or simple as, as something as simple as friends to just kick me up. FASA has helped me to grow in a person I didn't know I could be. As community service officer, I want to make new members and incoming FASA freshmen feel as welcome as I did when I first, for, first joined FASA. Furthermore, I realized that FASA has so much potential to better the community by expanding it beyond UW to the Filipino community of Seattle, and even beyond that. One of my main goals for next year is to work with the community that we, as a Filipino American Student Association, should be more involved with, the Filipino community of Seattle. With the Filipino community of Seattle recently hosting a welcome event for UW President Anna Marie Kause, we are in an amazing position to gain uh, a foothold on working with the community for our community. All the awesome alumni may remember to haunt on Saturdays. I wish to bring back community projects like that where we can go to the Filipino Community Center, volunteer, and reconnect with our culture and our community. In this way, we bridge the gap between the, Fili the Filipino youth and the wiser generation of Filipinos. Another goal that I have is to arrange and hold a community service project every month. More so, I want to go beyond projects that have to do with food banks and youth centers. I want to serve a purpose that fits FOSS's mission and spreads uh, its recognition and influence within the UW community by, work, work, by working more with other UW RSOs and cultural clubs. As a community service officer, I wish to collaborate and coordinate more events with other clubs within the Pacific Islander, uh, Pacific Islander Student Commission to help increase solidarity between the island communities. I hope to collaborate in solidarity with other communities such as the students in the Muslim Students Association or the Black Student Union, because they too struggle as a minority group in a predominantly white campus. Besides one on groups such as MSA and BSU, I wish to work with lesser known students associations in order 
to help increase their presence in the UW community. After all, we are to stronger together than when we stand alone. Thank you. so close to the Filipino Community Center, um, I just want to make sure that I can get something done every month. So instead of thinking of town on Saturdays as something where we can go to the Filipino Community Center, we can think of it as a way as every month we do something with the community. Um, now, to dedicate time where people are really busy, um, there's a lot of tactics that need to come into play, such as like PRing and planning, which I think we should do really way ahead of the schedule. Um, and along that, there's a lot of advertising that we can do to make sure people go to the events. Josh? Yeah, so you talk about uh, doing a lot of community service events, especially around the community. Um, since uh, we're a student organization, we're composed of students, and um, with that, we're really busy. How do you plan on like, incentivizing like, these uh, events for like FOSA members or students in general to come out? Because uh, our sk schedules may not align with certain events. Uh, how do I get people to come to events? Well, uh, going back to what I said, um, a lot of the like a lot of the community events that I remember in this year, I didn't really hear about them until probably like a week before. Um, I know that people are busy, but if I tell them like a month before, oh yeah, we're gonna have this happen, then they can find a way to make more time for that. And um, also, probably give them more incentive to come to the event too, besides, oh, I can help the community. Maybe they want to meet more people, so I would also try to promote as a way to bond with other FOSSA members and also serve one goal as serving the community. Wait, one last question? So we're talking about the community a lot, but in terms of what you identify as your community, how would you identify your community in comparison to FOSSA's community? And do you think in any way, shape, or form that community can change and how? Um, what I see as my community, it's a lot around. My community here is possible. And I, like, as much as I want to stick with that, you know what? I want to expand the community, like, how I see it. Like, we just have so much. Oh, sorry, I wrap it up. Fuck. Okay, um, anyways. <laughs> The community, I know we can want to keep it tight and we want to make sure that we can, I just want to see the community expand. So I want to see FASA help other communities. They're separate communities, but I think they're all linked together somehow. Whether it's in, with a new dub, with a new Seattle. So. <laughs> Uh, the cultural chair positions go next. Uh, first is going to be Joseph Asarius. He is a sophomore at UW Bothell. He is majoring in international studies and communications, and he's currently running for the cultural chair position. Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Ang pangalan ko ay Joseph Asarius. Hello and good afternoon, everybody. My name is Joseph Asarius, and I am running for this year's cultural chair for the school year of 2016 to 2017. A little something about myself. I was born in the Philippines, in Cavite, the Philippines, and I was fortunate enough to move to Bo the small island of Guam, where I, where I was able to learn the language and through my barriers. Um, I was hesitant, through, in the island of Guam, I was hesitant to make interactions because coming out as a Filipino, like not knowing English, 
like a fog. Um, I was scared that people would make fun of me because of how I speak and how I carry myself. But I was able to overcome these barriers because I've always uh, thought of this one thing my mother told me, which was to ignore all the negative aspects and ignore what everybody tells you, like, and just to be proud of who you are as a whole. Because in the end, you are a unique individual and someone's words and opinions of you doesn't determine who you are as a person. And from this, I was able to fully appreciate and embrace my Filipino culture because it is part of who I am today. Fast forward today, I am running for a cultural posi chair position because I'm passionate about the Filipino culture. I want to be able to let the Filipino presence known in this community. And as Mary Jo pointed out, the millennial is coming up. Centennial. Centennial, centennial is coming up uh, in a few years, and I want to be a big part of that. And through that, I want to uh, bring the Filipino community to that. And my main goals is to uh, bring Tagalog language classes with our FASA meetings. I mean, who wouldn't want uh, free Tagalog lessons? And like to learn about <laughs> slangs and like phrases, because as I said, growing up as a Filipino, I mean, it's good to have, uh, I was fortunate to have the language and some of you guys like um, know some Filipino words but to brush it off and like to speak fluent, I want to be able to bring that to you guys. And um, I want to bring, uh, I want to bring, and we should be proud of our culture uh, because we are promising uh, the economic tiger in Asia, and like as Miss Universe, and uh, with a strong workforce of 23 years old, and according to the Inquirer. And as your cultural chair, I want to emphasize this, I want to make the Filipino cultural known. So, yeah. All right, next up we have Chantal Bali. She is a sophomore here at Ita, uh, studying business, and she's running for the cultural chair position. Hi everyone, my name is Chantal Bali. I'm a sophomore majoring in business. Um, if I were to tell you why I'm standing here in front of you running to be your cultural chair, I could really trace the reason back to one moment. Um, in 2010, I was 14 years old, I attended my first film night that was put on by my very own sister. I remember sitting there being in awe, uh, feeling connected to the people in the room around me somehow, and going home wanting to know more. Um, and that was one of the first moments I truly connected with my Filipino identity. And I'm sure all of you have had a moment like that. It's, it's empowering, and that's why I really want to be cultural chair next year. Um, I want to create those moments in individuals of empowerment um, and pride in being Filipino, or in discovering about the Filipino culture. Um, and I believe that I'm a candidate can, that can really do this, because uh, I have the leadership and the experience to do that. So I'm currently the vice president of marketing in one of my organizations, and to, do, to have that position, you have to promote, plan, and execute successful events um, and while managing a committee of my own. And I know that in order to make a vision come to life, you have to have that structure and that organization to do so. Um, in addition, I have a really like deep passion for um, the performing arts uh, and what it can do, um, the change it can bring. Um, and having that background, I think, would come in handy with a position like this that plans Phil Knight, such a, a vital event that goes into cultural chair. Um, which brings me to the two goals that I would have. Um, my first goal is around the idea that there are so many aspects of culture, like you can't define culture really. Um, so that leads to me to want to work closely with positions such as the political chair, historian, sayal coordinator, um, to not only spread awareness of our culture, but to also spark some action. Um, and my second goal is to have not only a successful Filipino night, but create a show that 
that sparks that action, um, that has people leaving with the next step, what can I do? How can I raise this awareness? What can I do about this thing that I learned about this culture? Because um, it's one thing to talk about it, to tell this story, but what are you actually doing? Um, so to wrap things up, I've always known that I wanted to invest in FASA on a larger scale, and after a lot of thought, um, next year seems to be a perfect year to do so. I have always been fascinated by this thing we call culture, and being cultural chair is another exciting avenue of discovery for me. And I hope to go on it today with all of you as well, together. Thank you. Okay, so uh, as I said, I was a student at Bothell, and I was an auto state student uh, working 32 hours on the weekends, and I was able to manage this through like hard work and determination. And as my goal for film night is to show the success that if you can work hard, um, you, you, your peers can see it, and like uh, to show it to the Filipino community. So my goal is that uh, my goal is something uh, for film night is something economic related that uh, we can achieve thing, greater things. If one of your peers can do it, you can do it as well. And yeah, that's my goal for film night. Um, yeah, uh, I really want to do a play. Um, and I actually, my sister watched me in school recently, actually. It's called If Then. Um, and it's about this journey where this woman has like two paths in lives, and you, she makes a choice. Um, and you see both sides of the consequences of that choice. Um, and I'm thinking, in the immigrant, the, the perspective of the immigrant is like they come to America and suddenly their life is great. Um, and after like being Filipino American, being FASA, we know that that's not true. So it's seeing the sacrifices, the struggles on both sides when you're in America, um, what happens when this person comes to America and what would happen to their family if they would have stayed. So what are the sacrifices on both sides of that picture? Because oftentimes we see one storyline um, in film night, um, but it would be interesting to see two different storylines um, being played out on stage. Yeah. Um, so I know that both of you are right now involved with the current film night production. <coughs> I'm curious to know um, how, what is working and what would you change in the way that you run film night? How do you make it work? What would you change if there's anything? And what works? Okay, so I'm not to be like relaxed and stuff. So as Phil Knight, as a director of Phil Knight, I would make it like two practices a week so that there's more time, because like we know that every college student has their own busy life with school, academics and stuff. But at the same time, we'll still be able to have fun with those two meetings. And because like, if we run the, like five days a week and everybody's gonna be tired and stressed and all that, but if it's just two, two days a week, we can still able to have fun and still get things done. And that's my goal, just two days a week as a director. Uh, I think what's been really effective is the use of like, committees, uh, delegating those tasks, and I think that's been working really, really well. Um, and that's something I would want to over to become the cultural chair and do film night. Um, and then, I'm not sure if we have this in our committees, but having like heads of those committees, because, I mean, film night is such a huge, huge event, and like there's communications happening all around. There's stuff that's happening on the stage, stuff that's happening in the back that you don't even know about, like the stage. So um, it's about that coordination. I think that we've been doing well on that, um, and I think uh, what we could improve on is um, like tr like training the the heads of those committees ahead of time. Um, as cultural chair, what do you think is your relationship with Sayo? Okay, so as cultural chair, my relationship with Sayo is I am part of Sayo, but I haven't performed yet because I am focused. I am focused with. Uh, of some Filipino events because I was a leader of uh, Phil Day. I was a lead. I led. Uh, I helped throughout other Filipino events, but at the same time with Sayao, I want to be able to uh, bring the culture 
awareness. I want people to be proud. That was my main message earlier, to be proud of who they are, not judge on uh, people. Like, with people think, uh, like, oh, your brown skin is enough and all that stuff. I want you guys to be, like, unique. That's my main message. And with Saya, working together with Saya, I want to be able to um, show showcase the dance moves that we have. Because, like, if there's K-pop, there's J-pop and all the other dance moves, man. I think, I believe, I strongly believe that Saya can top all of those performances with our culture. Like I said before, I think culture, cultural care encompasses so much. And that includes like the arts. So yeah. Um, and a big thing that I really like that Sayo did this year was Sayo Showcase. Um, and I think that's a great like cross cross with cultural chair and Sayo coordinator. Um, it's it's saying like go to this event because it's really cool. But what do you get out of it culturally? What can you learn about yourself uh, through this dance? Um, and and it's more of the education side of the Sayal, where it comes from, why we do it, is where the cultural chair comes in. One last question. You have one minute. Um, so really quick, I kind of have one question for each of you. So for Joseph, if I'm a student who has no idea what the Filipino culture is, how would you educate them on that? As a student who doesn't know the Filipino culture, I would tell them, I would uh, bring them to my house. I would just basically. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a stranger. It's a stranger. I, I'm open up, I'm, I'll open up to the Filipinos and the non Filipino community. I'll bring them up to my house and like teach them Tagalog lessons. Like, I actually cook too, so I'll probably like cook a or like tinola or some of like, the Filipino foods and I'll make them culturally aware. And as a Filipino, I want them to be unique. That's my main goal. At the end of the day, you're Filipino, be, a, be proud of who you are, and not be able to color your skin or anything. So. And then, for myself. Uh, is it for people who aren't Filipino? Yeah. Um, I think it's for everyone. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, for you. <coughs> uh, if I can't attend Filipino night, how would you empower and educate me on the culture? Yeah, uh, I think that uh, that connects to uh, the different... So. It's really easy to in this organization to weave in culture because you're meeting every other Thursday. Um, so it's a matter of what can you weave into those Thursday meetings. Um, and it's really great because culture crosses with political chair. So what can I work with um, during a meeting with political chair? Um, how can I work with Sayao Showcase or Sayao? Um, and how can I work with a historian? So um, I think it's weaving those into the meetings is what's key because that's where we see most of the Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up we have a uh, presentation for the We have one candidate for this, it's Sean Sumalat. He is a freshman here at UW, intended to major in microbiology, and he's running for the fundraising position. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sean Smobat, a freshman currently intending to major in microbiology, and I'm running to be a 2016-2017 fundraising chair. Many of you are most likely wondering what my qualifications are and why I'm running for the position. I have a legitimate amount of experience as a fundraiser. I've done a lot of fundraising ever since I was a little kid. Remember those little kids that would walk by and ask you if you could buy some of their chocolate bars? <laughs> I was one of those kids back in the day, too. But in all honesty, I've spearheaded a few fundraising events in my high school career, from overseeing a makeshift parking lot at my church during some local events, to performing restaurant takeovers. I have the drive, and I am fully committed to make sure that, funding, that fundraising events run smoothly, and I will use my communicative skills to reach out to potential volunteers and commit more manpower to the events that I plan to assist with or create. For example, I want to make small improvements towards dog sleds with an online document that instructs volunteers on how to utilize the walkie-talkies and vehicles. I remember starting off the event not knowing what I was doing, just learning along the way. I was so scared to commit to, commit to dog sleds because I had no idea how to operate the radio or even where each station was. In fact, the only reason why I went to dog sleds in the first place was because my best friend, Christian <laughs> once convinced me that it was more manageable than expected in a fun experience. I intend to perform small fundraisers throughout the year, with a lot of ideas inspired by Joshua Paragas, our current fundraiser, <laughs> and many others. Some examples are raffles during meetings, and even a foster yearbook that I'm already beginning to consider implementing for some added revenue. 
The reason I feel like a yearbook is important is because we need to showcase all the memories that we share and find a way to keep them while also making a profit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure everyone's voice is heard, and I want people to share their ideas with, with me on how to raise more funds for the organization. After all, this is basically our organization, and one person can't be forced to do everything by themselves. I'll make sure to give credit where it's due, and I'll be your voice when it comes to financial issues. I feel obligated to give my all to FASA as an officer, because the organization provided me with a chance to turn my life around, <coughs> with the people in the organization as supportive as they can be. Without FASA, I wouldn't be culturally and politically aware, and I would never be given the extra push I needed to survive the school year. The events are definitely where most freshmen begin their journey into the organization, and I want to make sure to do as many as possible and foster community growth while raising funds for the organization. Basically, I want to make the events into something akin to a win-win situation. I hope you all plan to vote for me as your fundraising chair. I promise to dedicate my time to improve FASA in every way I can, while also helping you grow connections and network with other people. Thank you. straight into the social, the social aspect, but as time went by, I started to realize that there really does have to be a balance in life. And as time progressed, my grades improved because I started to find my niche, my balance. And the time that I spend hanging out with a bunch of FASA people, I know I can dedicate in the future to helping FASA and to develop FASA in, in many ways, more than one, I guess. And so to answer your question, I'll find my way, and I'm already beginning to find my way. I'm already beginning to show improvement toward my grades while also managing to strengthen my bonds with other FOSS members, and I hope to continue to do that and improve next year. Josh? Yeah, so you said that you, there was like no documents for like docs up and stuff, but there were documents. <laughs> 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 so, my question is that, you know, when you do these events, there's a lot of adversity. People don't know what they're doing. Like you, ex you want to expect the worst, um, but hope for the best, or whatever. But what skills or what um, characteristics do you have to handle with those adversities that come your way from managing these events? That's a very, very good question. I honestly consider myself to be very patient, and if people don't really go my way when it comes about serious things like this, I tend to put my foot down really fast, and. I want to make sure that all of these events run very smoothly. And so when things don't work, I make sure to make sure that everyone knows that they're not working in the way that I want them to work. And so when no one's taking their duty seriously, when no one knows what they're doing, I will call them out and I will make sure that they know in the future that they should know what they're doing. <coughs> because I will provide them with the necessary documents and, and the instructions to make sure that, they, that they're proficient in their job. Other questions? Um, many events are an intersection of different groups like Sayao, like, and people will just enjoy the event. So how will you get the people you need to pull off these fundraising ideas? Well, still, because there are people in many different aspects of FASA that okay. participate. Well, to, to kind of, so you're asking how am I going to pull people out to make sure that they come to volunteer for my events, basically? Yeah. Like for fundraising? Mm -hmm. Okay, so... I plan to collaborate with all of the chairs that organize specific events and make sure that we can come to a consensus as to when I'll be holding these small fundraising events so that everyone will be available or the, or the most optimal situation can, will become the outcome. I'll make sure to coordinate with Sai out if there's like a performance on the weekend if I decide to plan something on the weekend, I guess. <laughs> and I don't know. I'll, it's, a, it's a tentative process and I'm... And there are just so many ways to go about it, but I just plan to make sure to collaborate so that we can have this transparency and so that we'll know what everyone's doing and so that we can start to allocate resources towards our goals. Thank you. Next up, we have Ken Sucky. He is the, he's a freshman here at UW, um, majoring in biology and anthropology and mental health, and he's running for a story. 
Good afternoon, Fossa. My name is Kenza Gang, and I'm a freshman and dance major in bio. What does Fossa mean to you? For some, it's a place to make friends, like a social club. For others, it's a way to get in touch with their roots. I find myself in the latter category. There is no doubt in my mind that without FOSS, I would not be standing before you right now. You may be wondering, why am I running for a historian? In short, it's for my love and passion for all things history. In addition to that, I see this as a way to give back to an organization that has given so much to me. I believe that one crucial quality that someone who wants to be a historian has to have is the desire to share what they've learned. A good historian is one that showcases what makes history interesting and fun. We've all had that one history teacher that just lecture us to sleep, but I don't think that's what history should be. I want to transfer my excitement, my enthusiasm, into the meetings and beyond. Contrary to popular belief, the history of Filipinos here in the United States and elsewhere is a vibrant and diverse one, one filled with harrowing yet inspiring stories that have relevance even today. I want to show the members of FOSS and others that Filipinos have a proud history in this country. I want to show that we are resilient, we are an intelligent, and we are a strong people that has, can, and will continue to withstand everything from super typhoons to foreign invaders. What qualifies me as someone who is able to fulfill the duties of a historian? For one, I was involved with NHS, and I participated in the National History Bowl competition for four years as captain. As a result of these groups I was involved with, I learned to cooperate with my fellow students to achieve a higher goal, and I believe I can do the same. <coughs> Also, I learned to be organized. I learned to communicate as a team, which are both crucial aspects of a historian's job. Finally, I would like to reiterate my passion for history. History is easily my favorite thing to talk about, and being able to show what I can learn with others is a unique opportunity that I, that I plan to fully take advantage of. In addition to keeping up with my duties as a historian, I plan on continuing adding to historical corners. During these times, I want to start up group discussions on the topics I talk about, because I believe history is multifaceted. There are many positions, many, many viewpoints, and many um, uh, beliefs that I believe should be talked about. One big goal that I plan to achieve by next year is the successful implementation of fossil field trips. Fossil field trips will take members to places around the area and talk about Filipino history and make connections to fossil history here at the UW and how that connects to Filipino Americans now. Places that come to mind are the Filipino American National Historical Society, or FON, and the Burke Museum. The Burke Museum contains Filipino artifacts that uh, I think we should all see. Um, and I was considering at least to have a field trip at least once a month. Also, a quick note, I want to thank Sarah for inspiring me to encourage me to run as a historian. Without her support and passion for history, I wouldn't be standing here before you. This also segues into my next goal. Um, I want to inspire someone for next year. So I want to inspire someone to run for a historian. And I believe that historian is an underappreciated job, and I believe this position is a competent yet enthusiastic person. My goal is just to get one person, and that would mean everything to me. Thank you all so much for taking the time to hear me talk about why I should be boss next historian. <laughs> individual one-on-one -on -one, like talks and so I can fully get to understand what this alumni is talking about, where she's coming from, her past experiences with FASA, and how I can implement that into our club. Great. Um, as a historian, what are your plans for Filipino American history as well as it Um I plan to have like this, uh, so I was talking to Sarah, the current um, historian, and she was talking about how this historical box gets passed on from historian to historian with all these different tapes and stuff. And one idea that I want to, want to do is to digitize these tapes and put them online so that everyone can see them. Christian? So you said you want to um, do field trips. How would you be able to get the transportation, um, the fundraising, and to the liability when you're going to do that? So I would have to communicate with the treasurer, activities chair, um, community uh, service. Um, the Burke Museum is free, and I believe the font is free as well, and Thursdays, every Thursday's meetings are free. So, and as for transportation, 
buses. <laughs> and uh, for liability, liability waivers, I'll have to require each person to sign a waiver. Third. Uh, probably like one of you that didn't really run on, oh yeah, one of the store and the case, I know how to, uh, I know how to shoot. I know how to take pictures, or I know how to work on the video camera and whatnot. Uh, since Fox is going to be 100 years pretty sold, and there's a lot of uh, missing links, especially like in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, probably 60s. Do you have any plan as to how to connect those links? Um, yes. I would want to create a plan of action, figure out my resources, or who I can turn to. Uh, past alumni archives that I can look at, and <clears throat> one final question. Okay, thank you. Right, next up, we have uh, the political chair candidates. We have three political chair candidates this year. First off, we have Shana Kalaka. Uh, Another first candidate, she's a sophomore here at UW, studying Law, Societies, and Justice, and Political Science, and she's running for the political chair position. Hi everyone, my name is Shana Kellicat. I'm a sophomore intending on majoring in Law, Societies, and Justice, and I want to be your next political chair. Here's my story. I come from an underrepresented community down south of Seattle. I went to a high school with a majority of minority students coming from lower income families. A lot of my peers, as well as myself, weren't expected a bright future. But in response to that, I stand before you today. I see attending UW as a privilege. In using my privilege, I'm jumping at the opportunity to humbly serve as your political chair. I still remember my first day at UW. The first thing I thought about was my journey to earn a spot here. And this inspired me. See, I have a vision. I want this vision to embody a centralized theme. That theme being education as a human right. This is a campaign that Anakbaya in Seattle, an organization I'm currently a member with, is working to launch, which combats the closures of, of schools in indigenous areas of the Philippines and fights for affordable and high quality schooling in our communities as well as back home. If you want to talk about relatable topics, education unites us. I plan to collaborate my works with all of the committee chairs of FASA to build a stronger network base and emphasize the importance of unity. Aside from the board, I care about your voices and your needs. This will ultimately help direct my action plan for the year. I intend on continuing political corners at every single meeting. Every issue needs to be addressed with entirety, but based on everyone's learning styles, I want to cultivate our members through different forms of awareness on these issues. As PNI's female empowerment chair, I live through my own political movement, advocating for women's rights and empowerment. For further progression, I recently petitioned to ratify our constitution and add political as a chair that we will proudly represent in our organization. I want to meet FASA where they are today. I understand that everyone has different backgrounds in politics. Keeping that in mind, I will strive to create an accessible platform for members to have the opportunity to get involved in our community and stand in solidarity with other organizations to make effective change. My movement doesn't end with FASA. As an LSJ major, I plan to gear my future career towards working specifically with the law and politics of human rights in civil or immigration law. I want to ensure you of my stance and dedication towards political issues in our society and how my passion can positively impact our organization. Being political chair to me is about being inclusive to all ideas and opinions. It's about creating a safe space for dialogue, promoting action over discussion, but most importantly, self-growth. These are all qualities that I'm confident I can demonstrate if elected. FASA, I'm about empowering the youth. I have never and will never underestimate our ability to change the world, and I hope you don't either. Thank you. Our next political chair candidate is Jocelyn Gonzalez. Jocelyn is a freshman here at UW. Her major is intended nursing, and she's running for the political chair position. <laughs> In the winter of my senior year of high school, my dad was diagnosed with tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a bacterium that limits one's ability to breathe normally. The doctors told me it was because we're from the Philippines. The thought still plagues me to this day. Why does tuberculosis, a completely treatable disease, 
still affect the Philippines, a modernized country? The answer is simple. The majority of its citizens live in severe levels of poverty. This led me on a somewhat obsessive path of research to figure out why poverty levels in the Philippines were so high. In a recent article, Elmo Cruz Manila tried to deduce the cause of Filipino poverty. He said, though education in the Philippines improved at the outset of, a, of American rule, their Western education brought about the colonial mentality and tightly chained them into the bondage of foreign imperialism. This is a story of why I'm so passionate about fighting the colonial mentality. The results of the colonial mentality and poverty in the Philippines have taken a very real manifestation in my life through my father's illness. In a way, because of the colonial mentality's influence on society, my father wasn't able to see me win the Northwest Fossa pageant crown because it was too short of breath to leave the UW Tacoma parking lot. <clears throat> my name is Yasin Gonzalez. I'm a freshman intending to major in nursing and minor in philosophy. I'm only three courses away from finishing both my prerequisites and my minor. I am passionate about fighting the colonial mentality and I want to share that with all of you by becoming your political chair. From my experience as president of my National Honor Society, such as opening two libraries in Africa and other large-scale projects, I am no stranger to being a leader and executing change. If you're not convinced, here's what I'll do as political chair. I'll start by holding a workshop on privilege. If you're not convinced, here's what I'll do, or learning about privilege allows us to have a more thoughtful conversations about our oppression as a community of racial minorities. Holding this workshop on privilege at the beginning of next school year will give, create a strong foundation for my political corners, which brings me to my second goal. As political chair, I've not only begun to plan my political corners, but I plan to take the political corners above and beyond the space of FOSA meetings. I'll use the Facebook page and newsletter to notify FOSA members of resources related to topics I discuss in my corner. Political topics are often nuanced and complex. I hope to give you a comprehensive view of the topics through memorable videos and articles. Finally, I believe my minor in philosophy is what sets me apart as having the academic tools needed to be political chair. I learn every day about issues of, like, what does it really mean to be free, and who grants that freedom? The answer isn't so simple. It is evident from my struggle that my family has faced from my father's illness that the colonial mentality and subsequent impoverished conditions are something that I am very passionate about. It is also evident that my leadership experience and ideas, academic standing, and philosophical worldview had prepared me to be the ideal candidate for FOSS's political chair for the upcoming school year. Dr. Jose Rizal pointed out the necessity of education for Philippines before we could be granted independence. As political chair, I, Jocelyn Gonzalez, am making my goal to educate you. So instead of being granted independence from the colonial mentality, we can fight for it ourselves. Thank you. The last candidate for political chair is Anne Sampson. Anne is a sophomore here at UW, studying Earth and Space Sciences, and she's running for the political chair position. Good evening. My name is Anne Sampson. I'm a sophomore, and I'm running for Boston's political chair. I'm very grateful to be up here right now have you all listen to what I have to say, to have your attention. I'm grateful because attention is the rarest and purest form of generosity. Attention is the first step to being understood. I'm lucky to have a voice, to have you as a listener. But what about those who don't have a voice? Who are the unacknowledged? Who needs our attention? As a writer for The Daily, as a FOSA member, and as someone who knows how it feels to be silenced, I ask myself these questions all the time. I'm constantly looking for stories from underrepresented communities on campus to write about. As an example, I was able to get FOSA on the front page of the Daily when FOSA and my seat, PSA, fought for protected seats in the ACU Dub Senate. From marching in solidarity to presenting at the last general meeting as a FOSA intern, FOSA has inspired me to stray away from being the objective reporter to becoming a dedicated member of a community. My FOSA brothers and sisters, everyone in between, and those before us, have been and are resilient. Even when every fiber of their bodies wanted to run out of fear, they still stood their ground. That's bravery. And right now, as I stand up here, every fiber in my body wants to run away, out of self-doubt, out of fear. But I am the product of those before me, and that gives me courage. I want to inspire others in FOSA to be a part of this continuous cycle of bravery through political activism. Besides continuing the tradition of political corners, I have set two main goals. One of the problems that a lot of second generation immigrants have is a lack of dialogue between their parents in terms of politics. Politics can divide people, even loved ones. So with the help of FONS, Unipro, and others, I want to create a mentorship program with political activists from older generations so students can learn how to create intergenerational dialogues. In two years, FASA will be turning 100 years old. 
It has been said by many members that we want to be recognized nationally and even internationally for our 100th year. I will make sure FASA is involved with a project that will help us get recognized. Whether it be combating climate injustice in the Philippines to any other issue members want to address collectively. Through this effort, we have a chance to show the world what FASA is and what we are capable of doing when we set our minds on a goal. I won't be able to give all the attention that everyone wants, but I will give the attention everyone needs. Thank you. which is a mass organization that pretty much stays up to date with the politics that are going on within our community as well as back home in the Philippines. And that's how I stay up to date and that's how I know about um, current campaigns that are going on. And you know, I, I also educate myself. I talk to my mom a lot. We always keep in touch with our family back home in the Philippines constantly. And also as a member of PNI, I'm also up to date with um, what's going in our, on in our communities with women's groups and that's how I would stay up to date. Um, I believe that it's really a personal commitment to stay up to date about issues that matter in the community. So I've been doing that through just like doing my own research on articles <laughs> and things from both the Philippines, UW, Seattle, Pacific Northwest, US. And as someone who's um, a cisgender heterosexual woman, I know that I don't see all the issues that matter to everyone. So as political chair, I would like to start um, an ongoing um, suggestion forum where people can contact me on anonymously and tell them about issues that they care about and they want me to learn about and discuss to the group. Here you go. <laughs> so um, this year we had such a, like you noted, and we had such a huge fight for those Senate seats. Mm -hmm. And regardless of whether or not we get them, how are you going to empower us as Filipino Americans, as a Filipino American Student Association within you, within the Senate, just beyond? Um, I was talking to Christian about this. Um, the, there was like a committee on, in the USA Student Senate about like having classes on Robert's rules. Um, Robert's rules is like the, the way that Senate is run. So I want to help uh, AU Student Senate with creating those classes so people from minority groups can have the knowledge before they go into AU Student. Sorry, can you repeat the question? So um, we fought very hard this year to yeah. get representation in the Senate. How do you plan to continue that representation or expand on that? Well, I definitely believe that there should be um, kind of like committees that we build within uh, FASA that help make more representation within ASU Dub. Um, I think that there should always be representation uh, representing FASA um, or, uh, or these other organizations. Um, and aside from just ASU Dub, I think that we should even expand more for representation um, with other organizations and show our support. Um, I think that's definitely a good way to kind of expand it. I'm sorry, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> um, I think that the main key to getting people excited to be in government is to inspire their passion for politics. And to do so, I will try to use my political corners, but in addition to that, I will also, um, if in the instance that I decide to choose a delegate for the Senate, I will work closely with them so that their voice can be heard in my political corners as well. And I will also work with the Senate um, representatives from other PISC organizations and the PISC, PISC director as well. Christian? As your um, ACW senator this year, we were able to get the permanent seats, but we lost the legacy group. How are, how are you guys going to retrieve this this year? I mean, the next year, when you take off the work. I think it's important. 
important to uh, share our history and our contacts and our political partners. Um, I hope that we can address what legacy groups are in the Senate and actually make that change because I think that's an important part of our identity as also. That's really unfortunate. I wasn't aware that we were that we have lost our name as a legacy group, and that's really unfortunate. Um, as I mentioned, uh, my dream of this campaign, or I mean, this campaign that Ang Bayan is trying to power through, is like something that I stand for. Education is why we're here today, um, and we have such a privilege to be in this room. And I think that you know, as a commonality, where we stand ground, a common ground is where is through education and. I think that the more that we emphasize that and fight together for, you know, the rights that we sh that we have, um, I will definitely, you know, <coughs> recognize what FOSA has done, what these legacy groups have done, you know, why we have the resources that we have today, why we even, you know, have meetings in the ECC, you know what I mean? And um, I think coming from the background that I have, it's just, I can't even imagine how we had lost that name as a legacy group. Um, and that's definitely something I would want to fight back for. Um, I would first go to the like ASU Dev um, administrators and ask, why do you think that we're no longer a legacy group? Did we not work with civil rights activists at that time to earn that name? Because they say that the greatest form of oppression is forgetting, and I feel like they're trying to make us forget our past as active people in the community. And I feel like a lot of people in this room also care about that issue. And if I'm political chair, I would like to start a group with those people so that we can create a collaborative plan to fight this injustice. Um, I really like all of your platforms talking about political action and political activism, but um, for a lot of like, the incoming freshmen next year, a lot of FOSS members like, came from places where they don't know about themselves. So how do you expect new um, new freshmen and younger folks to want to be politically active if they don't even know about themselves and about their culture yet. I'm happy you brought that up, Louie, because you are actually what sparked that in me. I remember watching you during your first uh, presentation, and you were everything that I wanted to be. Like, in terms of, like, you know, your knowledge and your growth. And to be honest with you, if I think back to the first day that I transferred to UW from SEU, like, I would never think that I'd be a political, like, even run to be a political chair. If anything, I ran from politics. I didn't even understand my history, my people. And since then, I've done so much self-growth. And I mentioned this in my speech, and I think that's the most important thing and what people misunderstand when it comes to politics. It's just, you know, you have to step back and really define who you are, where your history is, what your people have fought for and why you're here today, and why you, what, you, what it means to define yourself as a Filipino-American, even if you're not Filipino. What makes you who you are? What are your roots? You know, especially as a minority student. Um, and I want to basically create that available platform. I'm not going to force on these political issues onto freshmen that you know, might not know anything, or as, as well as my peers. I don't want to overwhelm people. You know? And these are, these are topics that can be overwhelming. And that's why I want to, you know, make a platform that's accessible for everyone to feel relatable to these topics and feel that they can participate actively and have that confidence to find themselves. I think even if people don't have a completely articulated idea of who they are as a person, their stories are still valid. So even if they don't, might not know what political issues they're passionate about, I still want to inspire them to bring out that change. So something I've been thinking about is the ASU Dub president currently does coffees with the president, and I would like to start something like that for political share. It wouldn't be mandatory, but it'd be an idea for me to get to know new members one-on-one -on -one and talk to them, And because a lot of people feel intimidated when there's someone in the front of a big room like talking at them. So maybe one-on-one, -on -one and getting to know their learning style, and getting to know what they care about, because the new members have a lot of great ideas. Uh, teaching uh, is very hard, especially in politics. Uh, um, different mediums like art, music, dance, but I feel like the most basic thing that I want to address when new people come into FASA would be to be
be aware of their privilege as a student here at UW. Because privilege, when you are aware of your privilege, you know your context as yourself and those around you. So I think that having that, um, that awareness will get people to uh, be aware of other issues than them, themselves. Thank you. So next up we're doing the public relations candidates. So our first candidate is going to be Christian Carmen, who is a freshman here at UW. His major is intended nursing and he's going to be our chair for the process. <laughs> 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 